and then you can take off. Okay. So I press record and uh, we are uh, live. We have nine participants. Maybe I'll wait for uh, one more minute. Um, um, so before Eugenio launches on his uh, presentation, let me say welcome to everybody. Uh, uh, the news of the day is the first ever CBDC in the world has launched, which is Bahamas Sand Dollar today. Uh, it's live. So this is uh, very interesting news. Of course, Bahamas is a very small country, but uh, and it's only valid within the boundaries of Bahamas. But it, uh, like the Chinese say, uh, journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Yeah, I, I, and I can say in Chinese they say "mama lai." Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, Kirfi, uh, I think I had sent out the uh, password embedded Zoom link, uh, and also. Uh, you know, in my mail, and also it is there in the meeting agenda. So uh, you think there are participants who are not here because they cannot get on? Is that what you think? Yeah, we've been pretty likely. Okay. Uh, I don't know what else I can do to facilitate this. Um, because whenever I send out an email, announcing uh, the talk, then I have, you know, I have the embedded Zoom link in there. Um, um, I, I did get the, the link today morning at 10 o'clock, there was an email to everyone in Hyperledger, what is Capital Market SIG, there it shows the link. Okay, that's beautiful. Thank you, Mani. Um, now, before we, uh, just, just a couple of things. One is um, um, that we are operating under the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation. And uh, the second point is that we are also under the Hyperledger Code of Conduct, which means a couple of things. One is the um, uh, that we uh, respect each other and are uh, even when disagreeing with others. Uh, the other point is that we need to uh, properly credit others and allow people room to ask questions and to talk. So that's that said, I think Eugenio is um, in confinement uh, because uh, things have gone uh, south in Italy um, and they are uh, requiring that people stay at home. So he's, uh, even though he's at home, he's going to um, do this presentation. Thanks for joining and Eugenio, please take it away. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you Vipin for the opportunity and, uh, and I hope everybody joining uh, us today will be very interested in hearing me. A uh, very quick first introduction, my name is Eugenio. I've been working in China for a couple of years, uh, basically in investments in uh, corporate and financial investment. I'm joining the Hyperledger community since a couple of years, one year more or less, and I'm focusing on, uh, on the finance application and uh, I took a chance during this lockdown to start a project focusing on the Chinese operation in DLT and in finance industry. Um, so in this um, lecture, I will try to outline the, actually on my point of view, the three pillars over which the national project, the national corporation will uh, start um, a revamp and uh, change the financial market. And uh, these are essentially the BSN, the Blockchain Service Network Infrastructure, 
the DC, the CDBC uh, prototype that is actually in testing phase in China, in the mainland, in a, a, in a few zone of mainland China. And um, actually, uh, we will, I will uh, finish on the, um, giving some highlights on the special uh, implementations in terms of administrations that are promoting these two uh, pillars. Um, I hope every, everybody is, uh, can see the screen I will, and I will start. Is it okay, Vipin? Yes, it is uh, fine. Uh, you should go into uh, presentation mode if you can. Okay, okay, yes, 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 it was just a check. Uh, yeah, here there is the, um, I started the, the presentation speaking about a very few quick um, policies that at national level are supporting the LT application in finance. There is a five-year national informatization plan that China has set up to establish national standards and policy frameworks. The idea is to create a national sandbox for uh, the blockchain application in finance. And actually these standards have been implemented uh, and published this year at the beginning. And you may find here the reference GRT 0184-2020. If you, maybe even if you Google it, you, you may find some reference. This is basically uh, a key milestone for the finance application in China of DLT because it, it is like a, a short uh, text of uh, indicating the roadmaps in terms of definition, in terms of hardware and software requirements, in terms of also um, application layer and consumer uh, API and so on. Of course, uh, China as a, as, an, as a nation is joining also the international um, institutions like ISO that are working more at an at international level and this is for technical standards. For main operational standards, uh, you may see here outlined the most uh, important uh, operational uh, frameworks that interface with the international settlement from RMB to uh, foreign value uh, money. Um, here you may see the, the the most important and the, the from from this the most important and the one that I've stressed here institution that are involved in blockchain business industry. The first is the cyber cyber administration um, of China that is regulating the, the blockchain service providers and basically all the business operations in terms of software uh, um, development of uh, blockchain industry in China. Um, of course, over the China administration of, chain, um, of cyber administration of China, there is the Ministry of Industry Information Technology. That is the, um, I would say, the, the, the reference from the politic that is driven uh, the political, um, how to say, uh, guidelines over this industry. Uh, with a focus on, uh, on finance industry, there is People Bank of China that is in charge basically in finance of these two national projects. One is the DCIP and uh, the second one is more related to trade finance operation, but we will not cover this topic today. Um, and this blockchain service network instead is actually a multi-framework, multi-chain, multi-ledger blockchain system that this definition is everything and means everything and nothing. Um, uh, the intent of this uh, a project is to provide the architecture layer for DLT development in different kind of industry. Of course, finance will find uh, some restriction in terms of uh, um, capability of free development because uh, it's a very sensitive sector, but uh, um, uh, due to the fact that uh, it's a national project, uh, it's just started and will be developed uh, 
national infrastructure layer for mainland operation. Um, here are the founders, actually the founders of the initiative, but, uh, and these are just the reference because uh, day after day, new, um, new members are joining the project uh, from national public administration to private administration corporation. Uh, which are the key parts of this infrastructure? The first one, I will say, and the more strategic one are, are public city nodes that are, uh, I will say, the end points for DLT developers to build some DLT application around the smart cities in China. Uh, you may see here that the BSN has also an international strategic plans, development plan, and um, we don't know uh, a lot of about this. We know that we'll uh, be ruling with different restrictions, of course, in order to uh, be complying with uh, international, for instance, policy in terms of privacy and data management. Uh, but we, if the, we know that the BSN at, in mainland is fully operated, we know that uh, the progress for the international operation is still in um, early stage phase, I would say. Um, of course, another key part of this element is uh, blockchain framework. We have different kind of framework, permissionless and permissioned framework. And of course, Hyperledger, I think it, it's finding a key role uh, within the project because it is able uh, to connect uh, overseas DLT application, maybe uh, will be for sure uh, able to connect this DLT application, maybe developed uh, internationally into the Chinese marketplace. Uh, this is happening because uh, um, the, the Hyperledger consents to, uh, to have uh, some tools in terms of encryption that uh, consent the data to perform into the Chinese market. Um, and of course, another key part of this uh, project are the BSN portals that are actually uh, the selling point of BSN and DLT application over BSN. Um, here you may see collected the, the main participants, uh, blockchain framework and users, and cloud service provider. It's another key point on, on, on the value of this initiative is the fact that all the clouds, main cloud service provider internationally uh, join the, the project in addition to the Chinese one. Um, and I would say from a, a corporate development point of view, we can swift uh, the project in two layers. The first one is the BSN Alliance, that is actually um, an interoperability uh, protocol uh, that connects different uh, interoperability solution, uh, and uh, this will be uh, like the road for uh, connecting different kinds of DLT frameworks and networks. Yeah. On the other side, we have the Open Chain Consortium that will be in charge of managing the operation and the settlement uh, over the BSN project. Um, I would like to take a break. If anybody has some question, please do, do to ask for. Very interesting. Um, I was interested in the uh, international uh, aspect of this because I know that um, Michael Sung from Red Date. Yes. Uh, I have been talking to um, Julian of Hyperledger and others. And do you have any more information on this? Yeah, there actually, uh, we are, uh, I, I can say we because I'm supporting directly Michael on, on, uh, on this, uh, this starting operation. And I will be joining uh, his company very soon in uh, terms of business development operation. Um, we are now in the phasing of uh, uh, closing very uh, huge 
number of strategic partnerships with, um, but they are more in finance industry than in IT industry. I cannot say much many more information about this uh, for now, but uh, what I can say is that the international development of the BFN is, uh, even if it's still in the early stage, it's growing very fast because um, it's actually a unique opportunity. Yeah. And uh, it is opening a very important uh, slice of the market in terms of DLP in connecting overseas DLP solution and Chinese DLP solutions. Um, I know that, uh, for example, uh, in BSN, uh, the native support is there for, um, let's say, Hyperledger, Fabric, mm -hmm. uh, and several others. Many of them have been derived from Hyperledger Fabric. It's not, you know, even though they have Chinese names, some of them have been um, uh, derived from Hyperledger Fabric. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting that Hyperledger Fabric is the premier, one of the premier um, um, networks supported inside China. So one of the ways in which they are doing this is using the allowing, uh, you know, having everybody conform to the same standard uh, for cryptography. Uh, that is the Chinese standard. Do you know anything more about how they will inter interface that with the global, with the international standards because uh, Chinese cryptography may not be accepted in other countries. Uh, yes, uh, I, what I can say is that we are, uh, we have been supporting by uh, different tools, uh, open source tools that uh, provide us the capability to interface and manage it different kind of encryption worldwide. Okay. Uh, because when checking, for example, the signatures, you have to, uh, if uh, money is being transferred from, or anything of value is being transferred across countries, then uh, one cryptography standard operates in one country and the others, you know, so you have to have that continuity. Uh, which open source tools are you using? Do you know? Uh, we are, for instance, uh, you may see, uh, but okay, uh, because I, I've skipped a few slides, so probably it's missing. We are, for instance, we are um, uh, partnering with uh, DML for the demo. smart contract. Yeah, demo. Uh, okay. We are partnering with, um, there are a few international partners, um, but I cannot disclose here uh, until I don't have the, the permission for that. Okay. Okay. So, um, that I, my idea is, and this is what I want to convey is the fact that we are using uh, open source solutions and interoperability solution in terms of finance application to uh, provide international settlements and uh, uh, international interoperability application of the LP framework. Okay, we'll uh, we'll talk more about that. Uh, I think yeah. You continue. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I am. Uh, I've been enlisting a couple of uh, Chinese blockchain as a service provider that are actually uh, working and are involved in the alliance of the BSN and uh, alliancing with uh, strategic partners. You may see China Union Pay, Hand Group, and WeBank. They are all, uh, even, they, even if they are not uh, maybe just a member of BSN, they are partnering with strategic partners of us. So it's like the, 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 the key point is that BSN is a national project. So it's, uh, it is used to um, support each other industry together. Um, also JD and OneWay and, uh, and Baidu, Baidu is also very 
very, 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 very connected with BSM. Um, that is actually ending my 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 side of on my side for BSM. And I will move on uh, on DC. Okay. Um, this ape, it's actually a project that started around uh, uh, six years ago um, and uh, it took a long phase of research. It is based on the, on the assumption that China is basically uh, the largest uh, digitized uh, market for in terms of sovereign identity and so in terms of possibility to execute uh, digitized transactions. Uh, here you may see a very brief introduction. The intent is to fully replace, replace the paper cash in 10, 15 years, according to news information. These are, these are all my suggestions because you know that there is no official white paper about this solution yet. Uh, my, my statement is, is it possible to replace the, the, the paper cash in 10, 15 years? According to my working experience and life experience in China, I think yes. Um, what, are, what, is the, the, what are the main intents of this initiative? Okay, uh, strengthening the financial infrastructure by promoting competition into payment market, monitoring the fund flows, and internationalization of RMB. Uh, here you may see very, very bad, I will say, images from my side of this uh, double structure of uh, the design. The design uh, of, uh, it's like uh, a CDBC baked one on one by the public reserves. Uh, it is, the circulation is based on a two tire system um, that is defined by uh, the central bank that is issuing to the commercial bank that are uh, actively uh, issuing the services to the endpoints for electronic wallets. Um, one of the key features of, of course, of the, 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 the concept is the, is the registration center that is actually uh, recording the DC transaction and uh, the whole life cycle of the instant uh, circulation and redemption of the CDBC. Um, the system is, is it um, a centralized ledger? And so it's not uh, a DLT, 100% DLT solution. Of course, this um, project embraced some uh, tools of DLT technology like, for instance, hands, hash, um, function and uh, sorry <coughs> and encryption um, the, the the idea is that uh, the financial market of course is a sensitive sector so we need 100 uh, percent governance on the on the on a centralized ledger so there is no need for a consensual algorithm as well um, one of the probably most interesting uh, tool of the DCP is the loose account coupling uh, system that is actually connected to uh, the system that is uh, embodying this solution. It is actually a tokenite model. And uh, actually the, the hash function is uh, um, hiding the information uh, of the customer, of the owner of the wallets to the commercial banks. And in fact, the information are only uh, be available to the central banks that, uh, and it can be accessed only for specific reasons. It is based on uh, unspent transaction output, output, sorry. And um, yeah, it's, uh, Actually, the, um, I would say the, the, the key point is to um, use uh, the central bank as the, um, the, the pivot uh, of the uh, banking operation and to shift to the, the commercial bank position into uh, operating uh, system providers.
um, the wallets yeah the wallets are of course interfacing with the end user solutions um, they are pairing I'm, I understand that maybe um, a few of us they, they, they know about this information but I found interesting to, to share with the, also the ones that are not all in the um, uh, involved in the topic so wallets uh, collects uh, of course a pair of public and private key so they manage the encryption solutions and um, our uh, wallet are operated by commercial banks or by non-financial institution uh, were were working as a custodian position into the operation and um, yeah, offline transfer between user will and recharge or payment will be provided by AT Mobile or a POS uh, system mobile leveraged by QR code. Um, what are the main impacts on, uh, on commercial banks? Commercial banks will play a key role in the, again, in the, in the role of the instance on and redemption of DC and we provide wallets to the user to implement the AYC procedure. Uh, of course, DC is a central liability to the public, and um, this means that the user deposit in wallets are off the balance sheet in terms of commercial banks. Um, that is one of the, my question. Is it possible to connect the DC through the registration center over the PSN. My, my suggestion is that it's still, is it possible for me? And we will, but we will see in the future concretely. Um, as I very briefly stressed uh, before, the, um, the third payment uh, solution like uh, Alipay, WeChat Pay, are. Um, uh, can be involved in the CP operation uh, because they could act uh, as a custodian position within the DC operation. And um, the, the settlement, uh, it's actually involved this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, proceeding. Uh, in the, in the final stage, I think, I will move through the, um, some use case that uh, can support the uh, RMB internationalization. I would say three scenarios. The first one is RMB uh, as a settlement courtesy for international trade. So, you know, RMB as a money for international trade separation. Uh, the second one, it's uh, RMB used for uh, investment and financing operation cross-border. And uh, the third one is, uh, and I think it's the most rare one, it's RMB as an international reserve currency. Um, this is another um, topic I, I decided to, 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 to add into the research because it's, uh, it's still a rumor, but uh, it can open very wide, uh, very wide scenarios in the future. So it has been um, reported in several very first star information centers and newspaper in China about this proposal of um, creating a, a cross-border trade backed by reserve fund um, and uh, CDBC uh, projects in Hong Kong. Uh, actually, uh, it's still, uh, of course, a rumor, and uh, and so there there is no official official statement about that. I think, but um, it's very suggesting. It's very suggesting. Um, on um, one of the key points in trying to summing up all these information. Uh, and I'm trying to, to do my best and understand that it can be a bit confusing, but uh, you may see that uh, I'm still in the middle of the presentation, so I, I'm trying to do my best. Um, of course, uh, DC uh, has a, a strategic role in order to 
make easier the business operation for uh, foreign people that are, that are coming to China uh, in, in order to collect as much as fund as possible. And so even if uh, DC now it is uh, mainly involved in the mainland operation, it is very likely that we'll, be, that we'll find a place for uh, cross-border operation as well. Um, another key point that I found very interesting, it's about uh, um, a very, very easy uh, comp comparison with, the, with Libra. Um, um, I would say that, of course, uh, the difference is Libra is a fully decentralized solution. Uh, DCIP is not a fully decentralized solution. DCIP is, uh, is using uh, the People Bank of China asset reserve. So uh, it's fully on renminbi. Libra is using a basket of currency as its asset reserve. And um, of course, another difference is that DCIP is uh, working as a money zero solution, and just as a money zero solution. Um, instead, uh, and does not, sorry, involve M M money one and money two solution. Uh, instead, Libra could theoretically work uh, on this. And uh, of course, on the debt position, uh, Libra Association is not central bank. Uh, lastly, about the, um, the pilot project, about few uh, few bullet points about what's happening. I said to you, uh, now the, the DCP is in the testing phase in a, in a few zones of the mainland China. And uh, it has been issued as a statement that on the two, uh, 2022, the DCP will be tested in the Beijing Winter Olympic as a first step of uh, first international uh, use, because a lot of uh, foreigners will be coming to China, hopefully coronavirus stops. Um, you will see that um, DC is involving uh, the, the most important commercial banks in China, like Agricultural Bank of China, uh, China Construction Bank, and uh, ICBC. Uh, how um, the People Bank of China is trying to develop this uh, this product. First of all, is uh, setting up fintech company in a specific uh, free trade zone. Free free trade zone. With uh, this free trade zone, I have a pilot uh, sandbox of uh, provision and regulation that gives a much more free use of. Uh, an easy use of uh, funds to develop uh, innovative financial services. This, um, this, uh, this zone basically are uh, all in the, the eastern side of China along Beijing, uh, Shanghai and, and uh, Zhejiang and of course the Greater Bay Area that is uh, belonging to Shenzhen and uh, Hong Kong. Um, another key point is, of course, uh, in the last uh, in the last uh, in the last weeks, we have uh, we have seen the first use case of DC in the Greater Bay Area, and uh, due to the Mid Autumn Festival, this um, this uh, electronic uh, money system has been tested to the public, has been sent to red envelope to the public. And uh, actually, this was the first uh, use on uh, retail use of the SIP. And uh, finishing, I think, yeah, finishing the, the, the slide to, to the DCIP, I, I, I'm um, just making a few suggestions. Uh, we, we've seen that BSN is collecting um, DLT application overseas, and it is collecting data of chain by. Um, oracles. So my suggestion is uh, this uh, kind of solution can be used also to record 
uh, DC break, um, data on the registration centers and be used as, as, uh, as tools in order to account uh, transaction over PSN. We, of, of, of course, we don't have the, the answer yet, uh, also because DC and BSN are still separate project managed by different uh, state administration, but uh, we can see a vision in the future, let's say, let's put it in this way. Um, here are um, a few suggestions over um, and a few information over the, the main strategic development areas over which the DCIP uh, has been testing. Uh, the first one you may see, you may see it's Beijing Kejin uh, Ebay. The second one is called the uh, Yangtze River Delta and it's embracing Shanghai and the Zhejiang province as a core of um, uh, this development area. And the third one is the Pearl River Delta Greater Bay Area. It's involving mainly Shenzhen, uh, Guangzhou, and uh, Hong Kong. Um, here you may see the, the position. It's very strategic. It's, a, it's creating like a belt over the eastern side of, of China that is still the most uh, advanced one. Even if, um, for instance, uh, BSN project is developing very, very fast in the western area of China because it is used as a tool to scale up DLT applications in different, in different industries. So now we see also other provinces like Jiangxi province, uh, Fujian province to join BSN. Um, here are very few information about each zone because I think that is important for, for everybody also connected with specific uh, financial and industrial uh, reference into, into this zone. Of course, Beijing is, the, um, is known as a political and educational and cultural R&D center. Uh, Beijing is also issuing a very special regulation over, uh, over DLT application in terms of uh, business development projects and in terms of uh, regulation, provision, and data management chain. Um, Tianjin is also uh, very well known in China because it's a very important logistic center in the north. There is a one huge port that is, for instance, involved in main, in the main trade finance operation and logistics. Um, after that, Yangtze River Delta, I already said, the Shanghai, it's a, it's a main core in Zhejiang, where uh, Zhejiang, by the way, is uh, uh, in Zhejiang, there have been, you may find Anzhou, that is the, um, the capital uh, city for technology in terms of uh, capital of Ant Group and other uh, DLT solutions like Hyperchain. Uh, finally, the Pearl River Deal Greta area, of course, you may see Shenzhen and Guangzhou and Hong Kong. Uh, so this, is, this slide, I like it very much, I call suggested goal. Uh, this is like my vision, okay? Uh, my vision is that China is trying to stop a building a seamless data flow running within, within the national administration network. Uh, this network will be orientated by BC, BSN city nodes over the backbone connection hubs, belonging to the to different kind of governments and administration. Okay, and uh, initiative in finance like DC, even if centralized managed, could be recalled within the network. Um, at the moment, as I said before, Beijing is uh, taking the lead in issuing uh, the first uh, uh, national projects and regulation in terms of DLT application projects. Um, you may see here different uh, kind of uh, projects in uh, real estate, banking, logistics, cross-border training, uh, e-government, Building. Um, there are actually 
12, but I think that now the number has been increased uh, of pilot business case that connect administration, corporation, institution, uh, working uh, within a, an industry uh, in order to develop DLT uh, sub, um, platform and solution. Um, the Beijing the International Big Data Exchange. This is actually um, a quite new uh, uh, statement from the municipality of Beijing. And uh, it's about uh, this uh, huge big data center that should support uh, and uh, the national implementation of the, uh, sorry, not the national implementation, the implementation of the national projects like DC um, and uh, the trade finance platform. Uh, this, uh, this plan has uh, five different functional platforms an information registration data, a transaction platform, uh, an operation uh, management platform, and uh, I would say a financial service uh, platform. Um, these involve uh, different kind of, uh, the transaction involves different kind of operation in terms of uh, data assets and ownerships that I use right in a registration. And uh, of course, uh, it may involve, uh, uh, this is a statement, of course, it, because of co cross-border operations are operated by the state administration for an exchange. Uh, so uh, it is likely that also um, the state administration for an exchange will be able to, to implement this uh, and to interact with the this big data exchange. Uh, in Shanghai, we may see instead the uh, uh, blockchain alliance involving uh, mainly financial institution and logistic and the retail institution uh, in order to provide uh, better trade and financial service operation. In, uh, in Shenzhen, we have a, a very interesting case um, for um, a government building uh, projects. And uh, of course, uh, due to the fact that it is actually the, the only uh, 5G network, uh, fully networking coverage uh, city of China, uh, it will be uh, on, the, on, the, on the first line of the most advanced, most advanced city of China. Um, my conclusion, my conclusion. Uh, my vision is that BSN could be the engine for the architecture of the Chinese internationalization in terms of DLT. Uh, DC will provide a centralized management solution tool from Money Zero as a first financial layer of the economy. And through BSN and through his architecture, um, many uh, DLT application providing maybe Money One or Money Two or money tree services will be the value. Um, of course, the ending conclusion is that this uh, will lead to uh, a digital finance ecosystem and market uh, that could support also national investment strategies like One Belt, One Road initiative. I try to sum all in uh, 13 minutes and I hope you enjoyed. Very comprehensive and uh, integrated across all sectors. Yeah. Beautiful presentation. And of course the presentation will be available as a link from our, um, from our meeting minutes. Um, the uh, next s s section will be questions from the audience. Uh, please do not hesitate to ask Eugenio questions. Thank you. I can't believe that there's nobody asking questions. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> it would have been if you're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, great presentation. I, I apologize for, for coming in towards the tail end of this. Um, Let's see, I, I, I'm curious about 
timing, um, and I and I apologize if you got to this before I showed up, but I uh, um, I know BSN is live now. I know there's some uh, uh, experiments in uh, I guess uh, Shenzhen with uh, the the currency. Um, but at what point do we really expect to see um, like like real production uh, deployments on BSN that you can point to and say here's here's something generating demonstrable value? Um, is the, uh, and, and likewise with the currency, something that, that shows kind of broad adoption um, uh, uh, rather than kind of pilot phase. Is that a 2021 thing? Uh, yeah, actually, I think that uh, definitely uh, for, the, for the financial uh, applications and products like uh, at national level, like DC or the, the trade finance platform, uh, the 21, 2021 is the year. Uh, also because the, um, there has been a public announcement about the, uh, the DC publication at the Beijing Winter Olympics. So they must be, be before the beginning of 2022. Uh, according to my information, uh, the, the next year will be the year. And uh, um, actually, uh, actually, I can say the first uh, semester of the next year. For BSN, instead, it's more um, it's more um, uh, on, um, how to say uh, a development process, uh, and uh, it may take uh, maybe a bit more uh, because different kind of industries are merging uh, on on this uh, on this platform. So it takes also, uh, it, it must take in consideration a different aspect in terms of uh, system, uh, in general system and market application of for DLT, and not just in finance, but also in, uh, in healthcare or in, uh, um, at the government level. And uh, we, we see very huge difference between, for instance, the junk that have Shanghai and the Hangzhou uh, and have a very high level system and a second and third tier city. So, uh, and you can uh, report these also international because there are different kind of uh, issues uh, in terms of uh, exchanging data and uh, uh, develop, developing competitive interoperable solution. Um, but I can say that as Hyperledger, for instance, we, we, we can support 100% this operation because we, we also have uh, interoperable, interoperability solution in terms of interoperability networks like uh, Hyperledger Cactus. And uh, I hope, and uh, actually my story is that I, I've been connected with the BSN because I was trying to suggest this. And uh, so, um, for, for coming back to your question, uh, I can say that for financial application, 2021 is the year for, for seeing a more broader application, at least mainland. And um, for BSN, for sure, for the international uh, foundation, uh, the next year will be uh, the starting phase. Clive? Okay, <clears throat> so uh, my question regard is in regards to international uh, settlements and the different uh, cryptology uh, that may be required. So let me give you a quick example. So I'm a, a contributor to uh, Hyperledger Cactus and mainly on the requirements. And so what I was imagining is that uh, from the talk today and also looking at the requirements, uh, there could be a uh, hyperledger fabric node somewhere in China in one of the examples you've given. And there could be another hyperledger node, uh, fabric node uh, outside China. Let's say in Hong, um, I was gonna say Hong Kong, but that, not a good example anymore. Uh, uh, in a different, <laughs> yeah, in a different country. Um, 
um, let's say here in the States, and those... About two, Italy, Milan. Yeah, Italy, Milan. <laughs> well, let's say the, the regulators, um, uh, as in the example you've given, you know, China has got its own cryptology st uh, standards, and Italy's got a different standard that the government is requiring there, or they're just using um, the default uh, cryptology that shipped with the system. And then in the middle... Is uh, is Cactus, which is working um, to, uh, to 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 do the integration of um, of the uh, of the settlements to mm -hmm. pass some information between the two systems. So, <clears throat> what should the 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 the, the Cactus uh, cryptology look like? Does it need to? Does it use its own cryptology? Um, cryptographic standards does it use the standards from china the standards from italy does it use does it need to have uh, like swappable uh, cryptographic yeah um I, I think you 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 hit the point uh actually in order to provide interoperability we need to find a solution that can be uh, modified and adjusted with different standards in order to use uh, being used as a settlement token okay for the different uh, for instance CDBC solution um, I have seen some uh, solution on uh, uh, based on ethereum and uh, I'm just just suggesting okay uh, that uh maybe um maybe the applicability of uh hyperledger bizu within hyperledger cactus could uh, provide something similar okay but i i, I but i'm i'm not the technics on this that's the point so i yeah. that's he's a business guy yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> It sounds like the the major. The, it sounds like we do need some something which is swappable or some sort of standard. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Um, Karim had raised his hand, but I don't know. Are they still? Yeah, I, didn't, I was not sure. I, I would have time to to ask the question. Uh, my my question is um, more relative about the usage and uh, mass adoption because in China. Uh, Alipay and WeChat are already well, well implemented and basically the, it's, uh, we are cashless here in country. So do you think it's more going to stay for a cross border payment or uh, intra-bank payment or there is a real appetite to move and challenge WeChat and Alipay uh, in China? I my the, my vision is that the DC and uh, that works at money zero and uh, uh, maybe cross border or in terms of supply chain finance solution uh, provided by uh, Ali Ant Group or uh, Tencent uh, may interact uh, with DC over a DLT uh, architecture like BSN. Um, in terms of uh, business operation, uh, they can work, in terms of, um, from financial point of view, they can work as a, uh, taking a custody position. So, uh, support the, the efficiency of uh, the transaction uh, for the LTE application. Uh, my understanding is that uh, Alipay and uh, WeChat Pay are required to support DCEP. Exactly. Meaning the wallets have to be designed to support uh, DCEP. In fact, I think one of the uh, compelling reasons for DCEP was the threatening position taken by Alipay and WeChat Pay uh, in terms of the retail payment infrastructure because they they were doing something like 60 to $70 trillion worth of retail uh, uh, payments and they had captured more than 60, 70% of the, of, the, uh, of the transaction space. Yes, exactly. In fact, 
they i mean they already have managed the market in terms of retail operation so they of course they need to be compliant they, com they have to be complying with uh, but there's no need to compete each other i don't see the, i don't see this yeah but it also must be because uh, uh, otherwise there would be uh, systemic risks because if you are uh, private operators uh, control 70% of 80% of your uh, payment uh, infrastructure then there would be systemic risk and i think one of the compelling reasons for dcp is to challenge this and to provide alternate rails in fact this is uh, stated in every every european paper on uh, central bank digital currency mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, uh, uh, that uh, to provide uh, a alternative a payment rail. Yes. A any more questions, guys? We have come to the uh, end of a delightful hour. Um, please engage with uh, Eugenio uh, on the mailing list or elsewhere. Um, my great grateful thanks to Eugenio for showing up and giving such a um, comprehensive overview of the long game because that's what it is. Uh, Thank you. I did uh, not realize that uh, that this is not some game that is going to be played in one or two years, but over long time and that has been the Chinese view always um, they have been working on this for six years um, we only have people saying oh they are looking into the possibility of working on it in the US and elsewhere um, anyway beautiful and also coincides with the release of the sand dollar which is first first sovereign CBDC to be released. Thanks. My my pleasure and thank you again, Vipin. And uh, I would like to conclude my contribution to say that everybody is interesting. Uh, my the full report of the research will be published soon and will be available on uh, the Capital Market SIG and the Trade Finance SIG. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Eugenio. And I will try to catch you out uh, offline. Uh, we'd be interested to discuss with you. And thanks for the presentation. Please interact with him on, on, on uh, Hyperledger Capital Market SIG mailing list because uh, it will be instructive to all of us. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.